most amazing brunch um, with some of the inner circle nationals. And so I am just so honored to get to be in all of y'all's spaces. Um, and just thank you so much for pouring into me and um, you know, just me being able to hear exactly what I need to hear. So I'm so grateful to be around y'all. So the next thing that I want to ask you is I kind of just want to ask you five questions tonight. You know, I kind of went back and forth on what I really wanted to talk about. Um, and I've been typing and deleting and typing and deleting. And then after brunch, I really um, got a download that what I was typing was exactly what I needed to say. Um, so I just want to ask five questions tonight. Mm. And the first question that I want to ask is do you really know the difference between a dream and a goal. Mm. So dreams are something that you create in your mind, and while um, your goals are going to be based on taking action. You know, I'm all for dreaming big. It's something that I grew up, um, you know, being taught, and I've always dreamed really big when I was young. I used to play basketball, and I had a dream that I would be in the WNBA. Now, clearly I'm not in the WNBA, <laughs> um, but that was a dream that I had. And so I am so big on, um, you know, having super big dreams. But I want to ask you, are you waiting for your dreams to come true and change your life? Because I'm sorry to tell you, but dreams don't just happen to come true. Rather, it's your goals. Rather, it is your goals that can forever change your life. And also, your dreams are going to be something that is thought of. So it's going to be something that you can dream so big. And it's something that comes at no cost, but your goals are going to come with a cost. Your goals require hard work, and your dreams just require your imagination. Your dreams really stretch your imagination, but your goals really stretch you. Mm -hmm. So I want to challenge you to always dream big, but to also make sure that your goals are just as big. So my next thing, my next question is, do you have your goals up? Are they something that you're seeing every single day? You know, whenever I was traveling for a million, the first thing that I saw when I rolled over to get out of bed was my tracking sheet for million. It was the first thing that when my eyes opened, it's what I saw. And I had printed them out and put them everywhere. So I had picture frames everywhere that had just gotten taped um, up of my tracker. So I found them in my living room, I found them in my laundry room. Y'all, I even went as far as when we sat in the bathroom, my goals were looking right at me. <laughs> you have them up. Because when you have them up, you are constantly reminded of them. And y'all, how do we become, how do we have passion about something that we want to achieve if we're not constantly seeing it? So if you don't have your goals up, get them up and get them in front of you and make sure everyone knows. Do people know you want to be a director? Do people know you want to be a million dollar director? Do they know you want to be a national? Make sure you have that painted everywhere. And so again, if you don't have them up, get them up. My next thing is, are you willing to do the work that is required from you in order to achieve your goals? You know, million was never my goal this last year. I'll just be completely honest with you. When I left seminar, I was determined that I would come back with 10 offspring directors. That's just what I had made up in my mind. Um, again, million was never even a thought in my head. I knew that if I built the directors, then the trick would happen. Um, but my focus was really building 10 offspring directors. Um, and so as I, you know, went back into creating a plan for this, I would really been out of the field for about four years. And I went to my mom and I said, okay, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, and I want to make a change. And so I went to offspring to take self directors, and she said, okay, honey, you know that that's going to take work. And I said, yes, I do. And she said, okay, well, I believe you can do it, but we have to get to work. And so little by little, party by party, it snowballed into the year that we had. And I can really say I built so strong whenever I first came in that my unit really has carried me, and every single year we do do a unit club, but we really stay around 300,000. Um, and so this last year, just with our new people, I can truly say they made up a million dollars from our 1.3 million that we did. And y'all, I'm not saying any of this to say how good I am or how great I am, but I was willing to do the work that it took in order for me to get here. 
And with um, in October, November, December, we had parties every single day. I think we ended up doing, me personally, over 350 parties last year. Um, and so y'all...
where you need to be. Maybe right now in your business, you're not exactly where you want to be. Because I can assure you, you know, we had a great year last year, but I'm not where I want to be this year. <laughs> but the great thing is that God has a plan, and he has his hand in everything, um, all the plans that you have. And so even though we're not there right now, we can make a decision to instantly change that and get back to where we want to be. And my last thing is, and I think it's the most important one, is what is the imprint that you want to have? You know, the imprint that you want to leave on your business, the imprint you want to leave on your family, on your kids, on the women that you get to work with, what exactly does that look like to you? You know, my pastor always says that you have a unique, um, that everyone has a fingerprint, but you specifically have a unique one of a kind fingerprint. And I just want to ask, what are you doing with that fingerprint? You know, what is that mark that you want to leave? Um, I want to be a woman that when people ask, you know, what was the imprint that I left? I am just a woman of excellence. I go over the ground, under and through. I'm always, um, you know, a light when I walk in the room. And so that is just a few of the things that I want to be. So I want you to ask yourself, what is the imprint you want to leave on people? What is, what do you want people to say when you walk into a room or when you're leaving a room? You know, when they think of you, what do you want them to think of? And if you would have asked me what my imprint was that I wanted to leave when I started seven years ago, I really don't think I would have had an answer, honestly, because I loved our business, but really the biggest thing for me was the money. I was 18, I was young, I loved, I loved having the pink Cadillac, I loved the money, but I really, I, again, I love the business, but I really didn't understand the change, the way that we can change women's lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In this last year and a half, I have really stepped into my new purpose and my new why. And that really is that I believe our company offers something that no other company offers. That's right. That's right. And I believe that we have only hit a smidgen of the amount of people that we should be hitting. And we just have to ask more people. We have to stop being scared to ask more people because what this company has is far beyond anything that any other company can give women. And so the, I just want to ask again, you know, what is the imprint that you want to leave? And in closing, um, I have a, a story. We're a big sports family. Um, we watch a lot of sports. We watch a lot of March Madness, um, all the things. And there was a coach, and his name is um, Jimmy Valvano. And I don't know if you've ever heard the story, um, but he was a basketball coach. And from the second he walked into his first job, they asked, you know, what do you want to do? He said, well, of course I want to win a national championship. And, and you know, everyone's like, okay, yeah, you know, that's great. Um, so every single year they would practice cutting down the nets. His team said, I didn't really understand why. We kind of all thought it was foolish, but every single year they would have one practice where they all practice cutting down the nets. Mm-hmm. And so his um, first day on the job, he called his dad, and his dad said, okay, you know, what's the big goal here? And he said, well, dad, I want to win a national championship. And he said, his dad told him, well, I'll be there. And you're going to do it, but I'll be there. And he said, dad, you know, it's, it's really hard to do. There's only one team out of everyone who wins. And his dad said, well, I believe in you, and I'll be there. And so the first year, um, it took him eight years to finally make the NCAA tournament. And the first year, he called his dad, and said, Dad, we made it, we got a bid. So he said, I went home, and we celebrated. He was Italian, he said, so we ate. And we ate some more, we ate some more, and finally we were in about half the time of eating. And his dad took him up to his room, and he had a suitcase packed. And he said, I want you to know that my bags are packed. And when the time comes, I'm ready, and my bags are packed, and I'm going to be waiting. He said, well, Dad, you know, it's really hard. And he said, I don't care. I don't care how long it takes. I'm going to be there. So his first year, they lost the first round. Second year, lost the first round. Third year, lost in the first round. The next year, he, again, every single year, his dad kept showing his back, showing his back. And the next year, they made it into the tournament. And they made it into a pre-tournament that they had to win go into the NCAA tournament. In the pre-tournament, the game, the championship game that they played, they were up against the greatest team in college basketball history, had Michael Jordan on the team. Oh. And they were supposed to lose, they ended up winning in a double overtime, so then they get a bid to the tournament. And then that year, they go on to first game they win by six, 
With a minute left, um, they were down six. With a minute left in double overtime, they ended up coming back to win. The second game, they won by a landslide. The third game, they won by seven. And they continued on to win. And they finally won in 1983. And he said, you know, my dad was there. We had our moments. And then just a few weeks later, I get a call that my dad had passed away. Mm. And he said, you know, I really struggled, but this was my first big loss I'd ever had. But I didn't really understand why. And he said, of course, you know, he was my dad, but there was just something that I couldn't really figure out um, why, you know, I was so, so upset in the moment because he said I kept relating it back to my sports. And he said, you know, he got to be there for my biggest moment that I ever had, but I still just couldn't get past the fact that he was gone. And he said, finally, when I really thought about it, he said, my father gave me a gift that I believe has changed my life. And he said, the gift that my father gave me was he believed in me, and he believed in me even when I failed. Every single time I failed, he was there saying, well, you know what? My bags are packed next year. You're going to do it next year. You're going to do it next year. And so it didn't matter how many times it took him to get a national championship. His dad was always there behind him saying, my bags are packed. I'm cheering you on. And he said, I'm going to work harder than anybody else. And if I still fail, then I will accept my failures. And that's exactly what my dad did. So I want to ask you to have your bag packed with your business and to really just have your bag packed for your people. Share the successes of others, but not only have your bag packed for your people, have your bag packed for yourself. And you know, it is so hard sometimes to be your own biggest cheerleader, but sometimes we have to. And so have your bag packed for yourself, have your bag packed for your people. And if you can fill every day with that, I believe it that there is nothing that is too great for us to achieve. And so thank y'all so much, and I hope y'all have a great rest of the day.